What are we talking about in this video? Three things determining steel coverage. That's a hard one to remember. What's going on guys? Coach Matt and you go probaseball.com. I'm here with the man Nick Shaw, former professional middle infielder and creator of the Baseball Box. It's a monthly subscription box delivered directly to your doorstep for that special baseball player. You know, if you got someone who you love, who's a baseball player, loves the game, go check out thebaseballbox.com. I'll leave a link down below. Really, really cool stuff there. In this video, we want to talk about what are we talking about in this video? Three things determining steel coverage. That's a hard one to remember, but that's what we're talking about. Yeah. So tell us about it. How are you determining that with your pitcher and your second baseman, shortstop? It's gotta be a communication, right? Yeah, that's a got? great start. Now it all starts with communication. How am I communicating with my middle in, fellow middle infielder that I'm covering the base or that he's covering the base? For me, shortstop always made that call. Okay, and it's a closed mouth, open mouth. Closed mouth meaning me open mouth meaning you okay you're giving that to me it should be every single pitch or at least before the first pitch of the new the new hitter okay I got it or you got it why are you okay? putting your glove up man? that way nobody else knows the, the offense doesn't know if I'm covering or if they're covering that way the hitter can't cheat a little bit try to put it through the hole and the coach can't run a hit and run trying to hit it through that hole okay all right so communication that's where it starts second thing hitter tendency okay if I have a big left-handed hitter up he's a big pull guy he hits the ball to the right side a lot Shortstop's taking the coverage, okay? Now, if I have a lefty and he's a spray hitter, like I was, I went to the other way a lot, it shouldn't always be the shortstop. And that's what I want to talk about. I see it a lot that either shortstop takes it all the time or it strictly depends on the hitter, whether he's a lefty or a righty. If it's a righty, the second baseman has it. If it's a left-handed hitter, the shortstop has the coverage, okay? We need to be a little bit more progressive, think a little bit more into what we're doing instead of being robotic, okay? Now, after the hitter tendency, all right, it comes on pitch type, okay? Unless he's a huge left-handed pull hitter or a huge right-handed pull hitter, we need to go to the pitch next, okay? It changes based on pitch type. If it's 0-2 on a left-handed hitter and your pitcher's throwing a fastball and you know you see the sign right in front of you, fastball away, the hitter's probably gonna be late. I don't think he's gonna turn on that ball. So I need to plan accordingly. It's, I shouldn't be sending the shortstop on a steal and leaving the left side completely wide open if it's an 0-2 fastball away, then I'm trying probably to miss off the plate, all right? So thinking about pitch type, okay? Uh, lastly, situation, okay? The situation in the game, and I wanna mention one situation that was huge with the Brewers that I never thought of before I got there is a hit and run situation. Yes, I think it still happens, uh, hit and runs, um, but run around first base, nobody out, especially, okay? Uh, we need to think about this a little bit. If I send the second baseman on a steal coverage and the hitter even rolls the ball through that hole and it gets to the outfield, the runner from first is getting to third without a play. Every single time, just about, unless the guy can't run at all, okay? Now, that goes for a base hit as well. Normal speed of the ball off the bat through the hole, the guy from first is getting to third. Now, if he holds his ground and the shortstop covers and the ball is hit through the shortstop hole, it's a lot tougher to get from first to third for that base runner because the left fielder is right there coming through the baseball with a short throw to third base. All right, so that's one tweak they made. Yes, after the hitter tendency, the pitch type, they wanted us to know situation. If it's a hit and run situation, the second baseman was staying home every single time on the steal. The shortstop was taking the steal every single time, okay, for that reason. All right, so the runner can't go first to third that easily. So three things to think about there on steal coverage, rather than just seeing left-handed hitter, right-handed hitter, and that's what I'm doing, okay? That for the advanced guys, <clears throat> like I said, every single pitch, I should be looking at the sign, I should be giving a new communication to my fellow middle infielder on the steal coverage, and it should change based on situation, the count, what pitch is coming, what kind of pitcher my, my pitcher is, all right? So use those things, and we'll get a little bit better on, on covering. That's what steal. I was just gonna ask, that, and you, you read my mind. It, the timing of it would be after they give the sign, and you may already know the answer beforehand because you might not be determining it on the pitch selection, but some other aspect because you're not always going just off the pitch selection in different situations, different hitters, yes. a lot of different things. So the timing might have to be quick where you're, you're telling him, you see the sign, boom, you tell him, you let him know. Shortstop in charge, is that always or just depends on the guys? I was always taught shortstops in charge of giving the sign. 
Um, and I like that just so you know who's calling it. You don't have a second baseman trying to do one thing. The shortstop's wanting to be the boss as well. And now you're battling out there. It has to literally be as quick as you described. We both see the sign. One guy's calling it. The other guy uh, acknowledges and you go from there. All right. I said in the beginning of the video, the pitcher has to know too, but that's not the case in a steel, situ steel coverage situation. But in a pickoff situation, similar thing. You similar. just have to also communicate it with the pitcher somehow. Yes. Well, how would you do that? Uh, I would also go open mouth, close mouth there, and I would give a sign to the pitcher, say a, a pull on the pant leg or an open glove here, and just so he knows who he's working and with. And the pitcher can let him know he got it by, you know, all right, I see you, Bubba, mm -hmm. and just pull the, pull the pant leg back here again. Did you get that on camera? Right here. <laughs> um, other than that, um, that's great information. What about from the coach's perspective? Like how, how do you take this information and give it to the player? Because a lot of coaches are going to be watching that versus the actual shortstop and second baseman. What should coaches be doing? Taking some time to? Yeah, so bring all your middle infers in one day. Say it's during your defensive stuff. Bring them aside and describe what we're trying to do. Explain why we're doing what we're doing with steel coverages so that they're all on the same page. And what you'll start to see is it won't be as much as you have to call it every single time. Eventually your players will start to learn and you'll have a guy, hopefully your shortstop, who takes charge and who knows exactly what you want based on the pitch, the hitter tendency and all that. But it does take being on the same page with your middle infos, having a talk with them. Here's my philosophy. Here's why we do it. That's the biggest part, why we do it. Um, and this is what I want you guys to learn how to do. And I think in the long run, you're just helping your players that way when you give them that, that leash to kind of go out and try to figure it out on, by themselves after obviously explaining it why and how and what we're going to do. That's going to help them in the long term become a better player. So when they get into college and get into pro ball, they, you know, there's, they don't have to learn that or they're already used to it. They, now they just have to communicate with each other and talk about because one guy might do it one way, the other guy might do it another way. Hey, let's get together. When we're together, this is what we're doing. This is how we're communicating. This is our coverage, blah, blah, blah. And then you got it all set up. So really good information. Thank you so much. Don't forget to check out thebaseballbox.com. I'll leave the link down below where you can check that out. Subscribe to UGO Pro Baseball. If you got any questions, drop them down in the comment section below. We'll see you guys in the next video.